Welcome to Biblical Foundations, a podcast of the Center for Biblical Studies at Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. I'm your co-host, Jimmy Rowe, along with Dr. Andreas Kostenberger. Join us as we discuss issues in biblical scholarship for the church. Thank you for joining us today at Biblical Foundations. I'm joined by Dr. Andreas Kostenberger, who is the director of the Center for Biblical Studies. Uh, we're continuing in our series on biblical theology. In our last two episodes, we've discussed the nature and task of biblical theology. And today we want to discuss biblical theology and the Old Testament. And we have a special guest joining us, Dr. Jason DeRoshi. Dr. DeRoshi is the newly appointed research professor of Old Testament and biblical theology at Midwestern. He is also the author of several volumes, including How to Understand and Apply the Old Testament, 12 Steps from Exegesis to Theology, published in 2012 by PNR. And you also have an article published in the current issue of Themelios titled The Mystery Revealed, A Biblical Case for Christ-Centered Old Testament Interpretation. Dr. Droshi, thank you for joining us today. It's a delight to be here. Now, this is a special treat to have an Old Testament and New Testament scholar sitting at the table to discuss biblical theology. And so, Dr. DeRoshi, please take a moment to tell us about your family, your background, and how you came to be interested in the Old Testament. Sure. I am the father of six. My wife, Teresa, and I have been married for 25 years. Sensed a call to ministry as early as junior high, uh, but it was during my first year at Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary that I was awakened to whole Bible theology, sitting in an a uh, course, Theology of the Pentateuch, for the first time uh, through a classic covenantal framework, the Bible was opened up, to, up for me from Genesis to Revelation, and I was awed and so excited about the portrait of God, the beauty of Jesus that was displayed to me. And through that, the Lord was drawing me into what is truly a lifetime task of trying to understand how the whole Bible progresses, integrates, and climaxes in Christ. Well, Jason, I'm very grateful that you're able to join us today. As I, as you know, I greatly respect you as a scholar and a friend and as a new colleague here at Midwestern. In our previous introductory podcast on biblical theology, Jimmy and I have sought to lay a foundation for our discussion today as we discussed broadly the nature and task of biblical theology. And today, uh, I'd like, of course, to explore in greater depth the relationship specifically between the Old Testament and biblical theology. And so, I'll ask you a very broad introductory question. How would you say do the Old and New Testament relate to each other? In other words, what, in your opinion, is the best way to conceive of the relationship between the Testaments? Yes. So, to talk biblical theology, we are talking Old and new. And I don't take either of those titles of our testaments lightly. By Old Testament, it means that it's, it's something that has been superseded by a New Testament that was heading somewhere. When we come to the end of the Old Testament, it demands a sequel. And that sequel is found in the person work of Christ as he acted in space and time and as uh, his work is displayed for us in the Gospels and through the rest of the New Testament. So I, I would capture that relationship through a number of terms. We could use the language of problem, Old Testament, solution, New Testament. So Adam, Adam's sin creates a problem that Christ solves. We could talk about shadow, Old Testament, and substance, New Testament, or in more technical terminology, type, versus antitype. And in there, we're talking about these persons or events or institutions in history that as they're disclosed to us in the word, God has set them up in such a way that they create patterns that are repeated and that ultimately point to the person and work of Jesus. We could talk about mystery revealed, mystery in the Old Testament that um, is there, and yet we cannot fully understand all that is there until we see it through the person of the resurrected Christ. And now that Christ has come, in Paul's mind, he could never read the Old Testament scriptures in the same way. The mystery has been revealed. We could also talk about 
anticipation versus realization. Um, Here we're talking about hope in the Old Testament that is now fully realized in Christ and his work. Hope, fulfillment, or covenant progression that gives rise to climax in Jesus. All of these terms I find very helpful in describing the relationship between the old and the new. Now in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 12, Peter tells us, Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were saying, serving not themselves but you in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Now, how does this text inform the way in which we read the Old Testament as Christians? Well, I see it in, in so many ways as, as so significant for us. So, first, we find out that the work of salvation that we are enjoying, the grace of God, was actually proclaimed back there. That when we read the initial three-fourths of the Bible, we can find testimony to Christ's person and work and the mission that he would generate that you and I are now getting to enjoy. So these Old Testament saints were writing about the salvation that we are now embracing. Second, the text says that the prophets who prophesied about the grace that would be ours were searching and inquiring carefully, inquiring to know what person and time the Spirit of Christ in them was foretelling the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. What that suggests to me is that they were digging in with a mind that there was a Messiah coming, and they were searching and inquiring. What were they searching and inquiring? Well, certainly I'm sure they were praying to God, but most likely they were searching and inquiring their own scriptures. Isaiah was digging into Moses to discern more accurately who the Messiah was and when he would come. Third, what's so amazing about that text in 1 Peter is that in verse 12, it says, That as they were laying out the Old Testament text, they knew something. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but us. That is, in the minds of the Old Testament saints who give us the Bible, they understood that they were writing Christian scripture that would only fully be grasped and appreciated when the Messiah Jesus would actually come. They knew it, that they were serving not themselves, but us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Yeah, that reminds me of, a, of an anecdote. You know, when I was a new PhD student uh, at Trinity, I took uh, Don Carson's seminar on the use of the Old Testament in the New, and one of the textbooks that he required, and I still remember it because it was $95, which by that time was the most I'd ever spent on a book. Uh, I picked it up. It is, it is written scripture citing scripture book. He co-edited it with uh, H.G.M. Williamson. And uh, I saw the first major heading was the use of the Old Testament in the Old Testament. And I did a double take and I was thinking, what? Is there a misprint? You know, surely it must read the use of the Old Testament in the New Testament. And then I realized, as you, Jason, were just talking about that, no, he's referring, it's not a misprint. He was referring to the the use of old, older, earlier Old Testament texts in later texts, as, as you mentioned, whether it's Isaiah reflecting on Deuteronomy and so forth. And again, it's very eye-opening. Uh, it's, uh, so, it, it, it's so important to read the history of the Old Testament as covenantal history. It's so important to see that the prophets were not innovators. They had their Bibles open so that when they were indicting the people for their sin or instructing the people— They're simply rehashing what Moses had already said. Or when they're predicting great dread or anticipating super hope, they are simply reflecting on the promises of curse and the promises of restoration blessing that Moses had already given them. Mm -hmm. And wrapped up into that is reflection on the person and work of Jesus. And Jesus said in John chapter 5, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have the words of the eternal life. But I tell you, these very scriptures concerned me. Moses wrote about me. Abraham saw my day. He saw it 
mm. rejoiced and was glad. Yep. They, they had a sense that the Messiah was coming, and it appears they even had a grasp somewhat of when he would come. And yet they recognized that ultimately their word would matter most once he came. Yeah, I think, you know, Peter, in the passage that uh, Jimmy read a minute ago, uh, 1 Peter 1, 10 to 12, strikes an admirable balance between continuity and discontinuity, something that for us who engage in biblical theology always poses a, a challenge. And I think that's a lot of what we're talking about here. Um, you know, on the one hand, the prophets and the apostles are united in that they're both uh, placed along this continuum of, of people who inquired about and, and announced the coming of the Messiah. So there's continuity. Uh, but at the same time, there's something unique and climactic about the way in which the apostles have now announced the coming of the Messiah, as Peter says. So as we look at the Old Testament through a Christological lens, I think this mix of continuity and discontinuity is, is fascinating and, and worth pondering. I like the way you, you use different categories to describe that, whether it's mystery fulfilled or, or some of the other categories you mentioned. Now, in our last episode, we discussed the taxonomy that um, I've um, proposed previously, of various approaches to biblical theology in light of the fact that not everyone defines or engages in biblical theology in the same way. Uh, I suggested that it may be helpful to distinguish between four different approaches, uh, the classic book-by-book -book approach, the central themes approach, the single-center approach, and the meta-narrative approach. And incidentally, you could possibly collapse the second and the third because in many ways, the single center approach is a subset of central themes approach in that it just says there's really only one central theme and then, uh, you know, several other uh, subordinated major themes. So uh, let me ask you, Jason, how do you approach engaging in biblical theology and, and where would you place your approach in relation uh, to that taxonomy that uh, we previously talked about? The task of biblical theology for me is um, wide open in, in the sense that every four of those elements of taxonomy could be applied in faithful ways and it still be called biblical theology. Um, you, uh, with, with some measure, if we're talking just general themes and not attempting a central theme, like as if there's only one, then I would see a place for a tracing, for example, the theme of covenant, the theme of kingdom, the theme of temple, the theme of mission, and identifying how that theme is progressing from Genesis to Revelation and how Christ ultimately fulfills that theme, impacts that theme um, for we as interpreters. We could also take a biblical book on its own, and yet for it to be biblical theology, that biblical book can't stand on its own. We could assess a biblical theology of the Gospel of John, for example, or a biblical theology of Deuteronomy. But in it being a biblical theology, what it's going to necessitate is that as we're wrestling with the various uh, key motifs within a given book, we're constantly going to be evaluating them in light of the broader uh, sphere of literature that the author has written, or and also the broader uh, canonical text that would include both Old and New Testaments. We're trying to fit the message of this given book within the whole of Scripture because biblical theology demands that we're wrestling with how all the Bible progresses, integrates, and climaxes in Christ. Uh, those were two of the, two of the elements. You'll, you'd have to remind me some of the other taxonomies as you broke them down. Yes. No, I, I wholeheartedly agree that I personally advocate a combination of, of really all four approaches as well. And I know that you and I overlapped uh, previously during one of your sabbaticals, and we had some discussions. I think you were working on a book on Obadiah at that time, a commentary perhaps. And we talked about how at first you looked at the theology of Obadiah within that book, but then, of course, try to relate it to other books in the canon. So uh, it's, it's really a both and, not an either or. Thank you for joining us today at Biblical Foundations. We hope to continue this conversation with Dr. Jason DeRoshi on the Old Testament and biblical theology. Please join us again next time.
Thank you for joining us today at Biblical Foundations. For more information, please visit the Center for Biblical Studies at Midwestern at cbs.mbts.edu. For further resources, please also visit biblicalfoundations.org. Please join us again next time at the Biblical Foundations podcast.